Good morning. It's Friday and it is rather wet and very windy overnight. It's been incredibly windy and most yesterday actually. And the rain, oh, it's been bucketing it down as we say. Um, so it's grey, it's grim out there and I won't be going far today if I do go anywhere that is as I do not like driving in bad weather. Um, not so much because I don't feel safe for myself, it's just other people. Um, and um, we don't drive to the weather conditions. And I've got no need to go anywhere anyway, so other than a walk. But walks are good for me in my mental health. But getting cold and wet makes me really miserable, so it's counterproductive. So I'll just be as busy as I can around the house and keeping up and down and doing things today and um, you know seeing what happens. So it's Friday and I've been doing over the last month or so a Friday kind of feature of a word with some patterns around it. That's what I want to do but I'm going to do something a bit different today so rather than me hand lettering because not everybody's comfortable with hand lettering I've printed out some words in a typewriter font. I don't know what one it is, it's just one I like. I can't remember its name, but um, there are many of them out there and many of them you can find with a simple search if you need any more fonts for your um, computer, tablet, whatever. Um, and these are just some that I made a list of. No doubt there'll be others. Um, and they look rather good. So what I need to do, you have to excuse me a moment, I forgot to get scissors and some glue. Actually, do I need scissors? Most probably not. Which one would I like to do? Oh, doesn't really matter. I think we'll take willingness because it's the first one on the list. I'm just going to use my ruler to use it as an edge to tear this along. I'm going to try and keep the edges fairly straight. The nice thing about torn edges, pop that out the way, is that they don't show up quite so um, much on the scanner. But even then, as I've worked out that me adding colour to these with traditional media is not really a very sensible thing. Um, well, yeah. So I'm going to oops, pop this down somewhere here. It's probably fairly central because I still have still find it difficult to get out the habit of this. Just some glue. This one is a solvent glue, so it's fairly fast drying. And really strong when it adheres, when it dries and adheres. Yeah, let's have a will. Should I have a willingness to pop this to somewhere different? Yeah, I think down there would be good. How about that? The use of the word, a willingness to go outside of my little box. There, that'll work. If you want to know what the glue is, it's this one. It's um, Beacon Advanced Craft Glue 3 in 1. It can be used on lots of different things and a little bit does go a very long way with that but it works for me and so not that I'm paid or sponsored in any way just make that clear any any products I mention are just in case you haven't come across them before or are interested in them not because I necessarily or well, I'm not paid or sponsored as I said so it's my own personal opinion and it's what I use I equally could have dug out my Tom the Tombow mono glue um, which I've got somewhere here, but I don't know where. That that other one's at hand. I don't like glue sticks. I get them everywhere. That's my own personal kind of thing. So what I am going to do before I start going in, going in with a pen. I do really don't like that term going in. I'm not going in. I'm going to draw with a pen if I start drawing. I am just going to. Put pencil line round there so that I've got a guide for that before I start doing out. I'm going to use an 05 and an 
0 0.01 or 0 0.5, 0 0.1 um, Unipin pens. Again, not sponsored or paid for them in any kind of way. These are um, these I buy myself and I like them. I've been using the Uniball eye pen, but that it doesn't dry so quickly. This is Bristol board. And out of interest, I think it's De La Rowney. I've got De La Rowney, Windsor and Newton Frisk. I've got some Canson. I'm not first on the Canson one. Canson XL one. I've got any others? No, I think that's it. But it's Bristol board. And I prefer the, these because they're very smooth. And pens do dry very quickly on them. So let's have a look. So yesterday was my day for colouring templates or a colouring template for the Angela Porter's Facebook colouring group and I really have enjoyed um, creating them and this week's I really did enjoy. It was, um, I guess, a blast from the past in some ways, if you've seen it. It's um, very much a kind of um, full of arches and doodle world creatures and some botanicals and patterns. And under each arch, it's like a slightly different world. And, oh, I've got fish and sea life and things in there, which I definitely really do enjoy drawing I've forgotten how much and they're those cute kinds of whimsical kinds of characters that just make me happy really now this is a motif I don't think I've used at all other than collect it in my um, book here. But I quite like it. I think this word willingness, I've got have had a willingness to pop the word down in a place that I perhaps wouldn't normally. I tend to go middle-ish for diddle-ish. Um, but there's also, I'm going to try to be willing to use some familiar motifs. You've got spirals and these kinds of seeds here, which are some of my favourites. So I'm not going to go away from those because these are ones I like to fill spaces in with. And also, they make me smile. And my hand enjoys drawing them. So my morning drawing is all about me enjoying just the process of, draw of drawing. And I am more than happy to go with that today. The willingness to enjoy. I think that is important. That's a really bit of a skew wiffy one, but it'll work out in the grand scheme of things, I'm sure. And the worst comes to the worst. Oh. So I will scan this in and perhaps I'll find the time eventually to add colour. I've got an awful lot of stuff sat on my computer that could do with the addition of colour. It's sad. But it's fine. All is fine and well. I'm under no pressure to do anything at any time. So I will that in the black because it will be consistent and I can make a little adjustment there as well which would be lovely and um, it's always a nice way for me to start my day I'm a little bit Later than I have been, some mornings in lately, getting my backside into gear. I had a strange, I, I think, not enough sleep Wednesday. 
had a knock-on effect yesterday which had a knock-on effect to my night's sleep and routine I think has its place sometimes so. already getting this feeling of oh I'm not too sure about this do I want to carry on with this yeah that happens especially as I know there's a line here I'll want to get rid of but it'll be fine all will be fine it will Go. And then this is where the O1 I think will come in handy. Okay. I'm not entirely sure I want to put anything there that would be like patterns in there. I could do. The use of line it can bring volume to drawing or a, or a sense of dimension. And perhaps I should have left this for a bit later on in my drawing because I'm spilling out of the lines with that too. Not a problem because it can all be sorted out in the editing process. So I've got that one there, and I think we're going to have some. Again, this isn't a motif that I've used, I've, I may have used things that are similar, but not exactly this one. And it's just nice to do something a little bit different. Not entirely what, sure what they are. They've come from somewhere. Obviously observational from microscopic photographs, I would think. But exactly what these are, I don't know, don't recall. Perhaps didn't pay attention to. But I was just looking for lovely shapes and patterns and forms and motifs that I could use, collect and eventually use or not use as the case may be. Um, and I'm quite happy with doing that to be honest with you. Did I use them or not? I've got a lovely resource that's built up over a number of years now, I think. I can't remember when I started my first Sibaldoni. 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 I always forget how to say that. Because I don't it's not a word that comes up in everyday conversation. My Sibaldoni, so my visual dictionaries, my commonplace books, my everyday books, my sort of like journaly, I suppose it could be counted as a kind of art journal in a way, or a sketchbook in an even broader kind of view because but I think it, I think of it more as a reference rather than anything else. I've talked about this before and I'm waffling because there's not much been going on. That, well, there isn't in this age. But I think that a lot of the words that are in that list, I've got enough there to keep me going for quite a while. Uh, which won't stop me from making other lists of words that are interesting or have meaning in some way. No, no. I like words. I've mentioned that before. 
I find word really interesting that I've got favourite words. Serendipity was one of them that I was the first word I did. Ser um, susurration is another one, which means a whispering or a rustling as of leaves gently moving on the wind or the sound of a snake, I suppose, moving on the ground where you can hear it. It's that whispering, rest, whispery, but rustly sound. So I like that one. Susurration. To susurrate. Tintinabulation is another favourite of mine. And it's the sound that bells make as they're being rung. Tintinabulation of bells. Trying to think of others as I draw. My brain doesn't always work in the same way. As I draw, and things come to mind. Incantation. That's another one I like. Incandescence, iridescence. So an incantation would be something like a magic spell or a prayer or a recitation from a scripture, I suppose, of some kind or another, where perhaps it's almost said in an almost sing-songy kind of way, perhaps, with a rhythm. That, that's how it feels to me. I'm not entirely sure whether that is the official definition, but that's what the word means. It brings to mind with me. Brings also brings to mind um, Pink Floyd. Is it breathe? Speak to me? Breathe? From um, Dark Side of the Moon, and it's um, one of the lines is about the softly spoken magic spell. And talk about bells being rung there. I can't remember the lyrics, but the imagery that comes with the music. the words it always reminds me of that incantation so that's another one iridescence well that one um is from iris and iris was uh, the greek god of the rain greek goddess of the rainbow and the iridescence is the, like the oil, the sheen you get when oil's been spilt on water or when something softly catches the light and not glitters like gold, but glistens and glimmers and shines in its own special way, often with change, you know, with shifting colours depending on the angle you look at it, uh, a rainbow of colours with it. So not only is that a favourite word, it's also something I love to see. And I do. Uh, incandescent, burning brightly, shining bright, incandescent. Oh, and that reminds me, that's that's from an Ash song, isn't it? <laughs> God, blimey. But yeah, that, they're just some of my favourite words. Um, but willingness seems to be the one today because I, you know, I think I've shown a lot of willingness perhaps lately, keeping the theme of this word, in terms of the willingness to persevere with doing these daily vlogs. The willingness to try different things out, even if I'm not entirely sure about things. And I've had a fair few, what I would call, um, fairly disastrous things happen. Um, one I think I managed to recover, which was the um, something with a distress ink background, a drawing I did, an entangled drawing. But then others, I've not been able to. Oh, the, the absolute disaster of using um, chalk pastels on my passion word from last week. 
I knew it was a mistake almost as soon as I put chalk to paper, but you live and learn. And sometimes I have to learn things again and again and again until it sinks in that Angela. Angela, really? Don't you remember this happened the last time? So luckily I, well, with something I like or something going forwards that I'd like to use in other ways, then I usually scan something in, the drawing in. So at least if I decide to add colour, traditional media, I, I've got a backup if I wreck it. Um, in theory, I could print, print them out and colour them on paper. In practice, oh no, I've got a, um, a laser printer and it does not like printing on art paper. And I keep saying to myself, oh, you need to get a new, perhaps you ought to think about getting an inkjet printer and so on. The last time I looked was whether it was to do with the pandemic or whether it was to do with Brexit. But printers were, in, were out of stock, so many of them, of the kind that I was looking at. Um, because I'd be looking really at the Epson with their more modern version of the Durabrite ink that is basically waterproof and isn't affected by alcohol markers to any noticeable degree um, and there were none in stock so say whether it was the pandemic whether it was um, Brexit and all the shenanigans around that I don't know but um, I shall look at it Perhaps later I've got a fair amount of um, toner in my printer so and I'd need to find it a new home before I took delivery of a new printer and my problem with inkjet printers is I don't often use printers to print things out but perhaps that would change if I got an inkjet printer and then I think well why do I want to do that because most of the colouring I do these days is digital. And I don't need to print anything that I've coloured digitally out. If it needs to go onto something, for example, if I'm going to put it in my red, red bubble shop, then it's printed onto products. You can buy it as a print, as a canvas, you can buy it on a t-shirt, mug, you know, laptop um, skin, phone skin whatever phone case so many things um that you know that a, a home printer just wouldn't do as well perhaps and in a way that it's accessible for other pe for people to own art i suppose i'm not sure if i've talked about this i may have done but something that i I know I need to, or I would like to, do more with my red bubble shop, and I seem to be dragging my feet over it, and I think, I don't know why, it, there's something stopping me from getting it sorted, it may be that I'm just not in the habit of doing it, or it may be that I, I fear failure constantly. Um, or that I believe people wouldn't want things, that it, you know, it would be a no-go. And also, I'm not very good at promoting myself, my art and work and so on. Um, and um, But I do like the idea of making art available to people in some way that they can afford and enjoy having it in their life in some way to, to beautify um, what they already have or what they wish to add to and that, that kind of idea does really appeal to me I think that art should be 
accessible to people. That it shouldn't be a matter of whether you're wealthy, that you feel you can take ownership of art or have art that says something about you. I think that's what I'm, try I'm still trying to come to terms with where it comes to things like colouring books because it's a way of people having some of my art but also a way that they can make it themselves make it their own as well their own unique experience of it and it's affordable uh, as affordable as you want to make it really uh, people do amazing things with really basic pencils like Crayolas and um, or fine liners or budget markers or whatever and it's fantastic what people do and it gives them that opportunity to take part in art and to use art that somebody's created and and of course for them they need a willingness to to get you know to do this or to engage in it in some way And that is one of the things that I, I really enjoy about, and I do enjoy it. I, I really enjoy seeing what people have done. And I've been quite remiss in the last couple of weeks because I haven't really gone through. I've seen, seen, seen everybody's postings, but I just haven't spent the time in going through and liking all of the, um, the images I see and leaving some kind of often at the moment it's a rainbow collection of hearts it's to say I love it because to type that out every time is well I can cut the copy and paste but then it all becomes the same and it doesn't feel but those rainbow hearts really do mean it I love it I love your rainbow of colours I love what you've done I'm sending you lots of love and thank you for sharing it with me it's a shorthand way of saying all of that because I'm artsy and I and there's nothing wrong in doing things in a visual way either, I don't think. That evens that bit up. That's, I'm actually beginning to feel happier about this already. I mean, there are bits I'm going to have to tidy up. I've got a thick line there. This isn't sitting easily with me, but that's easily alterable. And um, I've used some, you know, this is a favourite kind of filling pattern for where I've got that V-shaped divergence of motifs when I'm doing something like this. But uh, It's always lovely to try new things out from time to time. This is a different one. This motif literally made, it's made up of two bits or two you know, that are joined. Again, it's going to be something that is microscopic because I think that's the theme of the page I'm looking at. Show you. It says abstract, but these are all kinds of things that are seen under microscopes. They might be formanifera or what do you call the other microscopic stuff you find in water? Plankton. It's, you know, quite stylized and quite simplified. Um, some may not be, <laughs> some may just be things that have been lobbed in there for interest. But I do have a number of pages of them that I can look at for inspiration. That one may make an appearance. I've used that central thing quite often. I do like that kind of having a gap down the middle. That's fun. Pure or bones. These remind me almost of poppy seeds and things like that, poppy seed heads, but they're not. Oh, that one is going to be from Ernst Haeckel. Um, very, very lovely book from, oops, as I move stuff around, be careful not to rip things up and smudge things on there. Um, who did the most amazing illustrations from looking at things in the microscope and also you know large things like boxfish and 
horseshoe bats and goodness knows what. So the book you can get, I um, can't remember what it's called. I'll look if, look it up and I'll leave a leave it in the um, description box. Hopefully I'll remember to do that. Um, or at least his name. And it seems to have become very popular again. Um, seems to see people using it or using his work for a lot of inspiration. And that's okay because I do it as well. And we all use it in our own ways. I know you can get posters of his work in, you know, and prints and so on via Etsy and other places. So I'm not sure whether it's out of copyright now or whatever. But I first discovered him when I was doing A-level art and naturally being a scientist. I fell in love with the detail and the um, I'm not going to say Have some morning coffee. Um, the intricacy and the detail and that observational acuity was well, a posh term of of him. But there was also his desire to make things quite symmetrical and perfect. And so things there really are perfect, as if nature didn't have any divergences in any way. Um, and things weren't always exactly, you know, were different rather than being identical and exactly the same. But I can forgive him that. Because we do do that in science from time to time. We take, I suppose, the average and produce something that is representative of all, knowing that there's a variation. In living things, regardless. Sorry. I'm having trouble getting my hand, mouth and eye to work at the same time today. I think I say that most days, but today is a particular problem. So to be able to get these lovely shapes, they're not things I necessarily would have thought of on my own, or perhaps they would be. Um, I don't spend enough time with shapes and try just playing with them and seeing how I can transform them and make different things of them. Um, that's that's fine. One day. But they tend to morph on their own as I use them anyway, so. I don't know if you've noticed what I do when I come to almost a close of a section where I um, have finished with a particular motif is I try to close the gaps off and tidy those sections up. Maybe not always. Well, I say not always. I think I do. I think it's my my way of working. So I think about a well, I think it's a bit like a well-maintained, you know, planned out garden where you've got clumps of one flower here and one somewhere else. And perhaps they've got shapes that, where they naturally flow one into another and overlap and so on. And perhaps it's a bit like that. I'm, I'm gardening with a pen. There's a concept, but not necessarily with flowers. And, um, yeah. Not always with flowers, but I guess it is like gardening in its way. Except unlike a good gardener, I'm not actually planning out exactly what I'm doing. I am working intuitively and just letting, I am making conscious decisions about 
what patterns I want to use and perhaps where I want to put them. But exactly how they get put together is a different thing. I'm going back to this motif over there just to add that to the other side because I do like to have them in more than one place. It's that sense of coherence in the design. So I'm going to try not to use too many different motifs in these drawings, but I'm going to try and vary them. And I don't think any of the motifs I'm using particularly speak to the words necessarily. I think, although I, I could argue that in Passion the, the roses did and this one, you know, I've, I've logged today that it's, I've got a willingness to try new motifs in this particular design. There's lots of sirens outside this morning. And I know that fire engines and ambulances and police have got different kinds of sirens here, but can't differentiate between the two but I'm not surprised that they're flying around with um, the weather as it is. Sadly I'm sure there will be accidents on the roads. How's the bad weather isn't taken into account perhaps or sleepy people in the morning on the so it is commuter time now, it's just after 8 o'clock, so people are going to work, that's for sure. So yeah, so willingness, so there's, there's plenty of, you know, willingness to try new things, a willingness to, to just do things, I think, but I think, you know, I could talk about willingnesses that perhaps aren't particularly healthy in some ways, like a willingness to always please others. That is not a good thing. I say it isn't a good thing. It isn't always a good thing. Because, uh, if it's constantly done and you put yourself you don't take care of yourself and your needs. The other person is perhaps happy, but you end up unhappy, drained. And not looked after yourself properly. But there are times when it's important to help people and to make them happy, but I guess it's it's, like it's getting the right balance and making sure that time is taken to look after oneself. This is something that I had to learn in my life. It's okay to be willing to help, but sometimes it's also important knowing whether it is the right time for you to help or the right thing to do. It comes with a cost to pay in terms of physical and emotional and mental well-being then perhaps it's balancing up whether it, that cost is worth it and whether you're planning to take care of yourself after you've done what needs to be done whether it's just part of an ongoing cycle of I suppose behaviour. It's not easy to say no to people. Those, that word made out of just two little letters is perhaps one of the hardest words to say. No. And one of the things I've had to learn as well is not to explain why I'm saying no. Just no. Or to put it in, I, put, I can put it in a different way, you know, it, it varies, I suppose, as to 
how I say no to someone. But I've, I'm learning to, and um, more and more often I'm able to say no, I think. Oh, that was an interesting one. That, that pattern appeared, but I quite like it at the same time. It does tie into to it all. I like the way it flows around here, so I may just carry it on here and just add some smaller ones or just partial smaller ones here just to. just to finish this area off and to perhaps twist the pattern around a bit, turning the corner as it were, with that kind of there's a lot of these here. I must like this one. I think I do. It's this flow of the shape. There we are, from baby ones to big ones. Works, doesn't it? And just to finish it off. These are almost becoming like a full stop here. I seem to add them when I finished an area off. Oh, that'll need a bit of erasing, the black there. But that, that's fine, I can do that. And I'm going to add some more. elsewhere because then it all ties together and that makes me happy so yeah so I think really when when I write the word willingness it's got so many layers of meaning like all words do and what it means to a particular person. And I'm drawing, so today, today's act of willingness is I'm, I'm being willing to try different patterns out or different combinations of um, motifs and see where it leads me. Because I, I never know. I really don't when I do art like this. I was watching, I've been watching a couple of YouTube videos this week, or I've watched, I should say, about the difference between abstract art, intuitive art, doodle art, and so on. There seems to be a need for art to be labelled in some way, and I'm as guilty as anybody else. And I'll say, this is very entangled in doodle world style. Well, this is just in tank, this is like this, but I'm comparing it to the style, my own style of art and what my books are called. Entangled is a word, it's one of my favourite words, but in a way it, it can have negative connotations, but it can also have really interesting ones like quantum entanglement that um, Einstein called spooky action at a distance. And it's now been shown, it was a theory for him, but there's been experiments done that show that this this actually exists, that we can entangle particles so that what one does in one place, the other one does somewhere completely different. And that's fascinating. It's the realms of quantum, which is the realms of the tiny, 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 where the laws of physics and science are different to on our, our scale. Yet they influence us in ways that scientists are only beginning to look at. Quantum biology is a um, is thing now, and they're looking at how quantum physics influences the processes, the biological processes in living things. And that's really interesting. I don't know why it's taken them so long to get round to it, but hey ho, quantum isn't just the realm of physics, because everything is made up of such things. So it's it's interesting and um, so Entangled is a label I'd use for my work because 
um, not in the sense of quantum entanglement, but in the sense of the way that I, I guess, put things together and perhaps weave things a little bit and And it's tangling them up in a in a pleasing way as well. So it's not a tangled mess, but it's a pretty mess, perhaps. Or perhaps not so much of a mess. I guess it depends on your point of view and if you like that this particular style of drawing and art. It's not everybody's cup of tea, but it does seem to be how I like to express myself artistically quite a bit. So it's not automatic drawing as such because I'm not just sat here mindlessly drawing, trying not to have any thoughts in my head about what I'm doing. I think I make decisions very quickly. I tend to do, make decisions very quickly in real life, to be honest. And I often do them very intuitively. Um, sometimes it can take me a long time to come to that decision, like, should I buy yet another printer? <laughs> or, you know, replace this printer and that. I'm not ready to, and perhaps one day I will be ready to make that decision, and it will be a very quick decision when I do it. It'll be right, I'm going to get that done. Last week I bought um, a hang drum or a tongue drum, and I've see seen them. years ago, which was the hang drums, which are no longer made by hang, the hang company. They, I don't think they, they are um, working anymore. But they used to be incredibly expensive because each one was made for a particular um, customer. And that was done very intuitively as to the, um, the, um, the, the tones and the scale that was used and so on. If I remember rightly, but there's so many in there now. But I think I've been thinking about it for a long time, and then suddenly I thought, right, I'm going to get one. It's lovely, it, you know. It's it's just so nice the sound, and I'm beginning to start to work out how I can use fingers and thumbs to play the tones instead of the beaters that came. But again, it's going to take consistent practice, and I'm willing to do that. I'm hoping I'll get into the habit of it, and it will have a knock-on effect on me practicing flute and learning my harp on a daily basis or getting my harp out again. That's that's my hope. It's a willingness, but we'll see. And I'm going to stop this part, as in my talking bit, the slower bit. I think I'm going to carry on drawing this now, this morning, and I'll record that, video it, and I'll speed it up and just put some music with it just to finish everything off. Um, so I'm going to say thank you for joining me yet again. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and what you've heard. If you've liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. Um, I think my goal is to try to get 100 people to subscribe so I can get my, my name or my art word as my channel name. That'll be quite cool. Yeah, I don't have big goals. I'm not looking for a million subscribers or more. But, you know, we'll see what happens over time. And um, any comments, any suggestions, any words you'd like to see done like this, um, just let me know. And, of course, once I scan this in, these edges will all disappear and um, they'll just be the word in space there. And I may then digitally add, like, a frame or something, and I may not. I may just leave it in that blank space with all of these things around. It's hard for me to tell at the moment. Anyway, I'm wittering. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm hoping that the rain and wind will ease off through the day so I may get out for a little wander. Um, but we'll see. So until the next video, take care. Goodbye. <music>
Thank mm-hmm. you.